On Saturday, December 8th, American Airlines, flight 2241, Miami to Guatemala City, is scheduled to depart on time at 11.15 a.m. from gate D-38. I found out I was coming here, I was excited. I was doing some research and I always knew it was a great destination for fishing. The more I looked into it, the more excited I became. And as the days led, gotten closer and closer to, to departure, I was, I was like a little kid. You know, the, the night before, I, I could barely sleep and packing for this trip is totally what kind of prepares you and what gets you ready, gets you excited for it. Computadoras de mayor tamaño tienen que estar guardadas y apagadas para el despegue. Llamadas telefónicas y los textos, por favor, se lo puede colocar en tiempo modo. Gracias por su cooperación. Bienvenidos a bordo. been a lot of places I can tell you that it's my first time actually besides the Bahamas traveling out of the country to fish you know, I fished my whole life and amazingly enough I've never made it to a destination like this you know I've never been uh, to South America I've never fished the Pacific so it's definitely a treat coming to this destination <music> I come from Florida. It's flat. There's very few hills in Florida, and I've been out west a couple times and seen those hills. But to see this um, in this type of, of setting was, I, I knew, I knew this destination was going to be definitely special. We are here. We took a, a small boat from the airstrip to the resort. The resort sits on, a, on a, a, a small body of water just inside the Pacific Ocean. So you have this small, tiny barrier strip of land, and then Neil's Resort is right there. Pacific Fins is there, and you're greeted by cocktails. And you know you're in for a five-star treatment. You arrive off the boat, there's you know many um, staff there greeting you, willing to help you, and and the drinks start flowing. So you know you're gonna you're gonna drink well and you're gonna eat well for sure at this resort. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Pacific Fence Resort is located in Iztapa, Guatemala. It's a boutique hotel catered to the people that want to come here. For I mean, it's not just billfish destination. Uh, yes, we are known as selfish capital of the world, but there's so much here. Uh, the people, the culture, so much history. I mean, it's, it's a place where people want to come and get away and enjoy everything that it has to offer. Guatemala has a lot of great fishing, but I think this is a destination people come to for billfish. It's known for its billfish, for its sailfish, its blue marlin and its striped marlin. At the same time, you have opportunities to be catching dolphin, um, tuna as well, and, and a variety of other things. But really, we're coming here with the anticipation of targeting billfish. Multiple shots of sailfish in a single day is, is pretty much expected at this place. Things were a little different when we arrived. Um, looking at the satellite imagery, the chloroform uh, satellite imagery, uh, a lot of the dirty water had moved in. Con some converging currents had caused dirty water to move in. And talking to Niels and talking to the captain, they said, this is gonna drive the fish further offshore. We, we, need, we need that deep blue water that holds all the bait. So 
A little different on this trip is we're going to have to make a further run offshore. We're looking at 40 to 50 mile run, which is not typical for this place, but we were prepared to, to make the longer trip. So we're just going to run some teasers, and then there's Bally on circle hooks inside. Correct. Same thing on the outside. Everything is circle hook. Okay. Everything is circle hook. But all teasers, pretty much. And if the baits are short, we're going to drop the baits back to them when they come in on the Correct. teaser. Correct. Yes. We'll try to bring them in with a teaser. Okay. And it's like a bait switch. Okay. Every day. Most of my time is spent on a small center console. Um, I have some experience being on a sport fish. You know, you're not worried about the weather, the elements. You know. Guatemala is known for its, its good weather. It's known we're here for the dry season, so rain's really not an issue. Um, but even on those rough days, when it's rough offshore, you can seek refuge inside the, the cabin of the boat, and that's nice. Guatemala is known as the selfish capital of the world, but I consider it not just the selfish capital of the world, I consider it billfish paradise. Um, there's so much here. People come here from all over the world to catch. Um, not just selfish, but we're talking about blue marlin, we're talking about striped marlin, we're talking about black marlin in some locations. I mean, this is the only place in the world that you have so much shots at billfish that if you lose a fish and, well, you know what? Regroup and let's do it all over again because in minutes or even seconds, you have another shot. Right on, Caesar. It's on the bait, it's on the bait. You got it. Hey, rod tip down, rod tip down. Let me. There you go! Yeah! Very nice. A little bait and switch action there. God, it's so cool to see him come in on those teasers. I mean, that one came in on the long teaser. The captain called it out. It's so cool. The, the mate just pulled that teaser out of the way, and all the thing that's left there is that valley who's sitting there swimming along, and man, he piled right on it. It's coming up. This is my first Pacific sailfish right here. Plenty of Atlantics, but these are a different creature. They get a lot bigger. Another one right here, free swimmer. I told you, bro. Well, free swimmer. Done you. Get him, bro. Another one right there, the free swimmer's right there. Yeah, I know, but he won't. He won't he eat. He's messing, yeah, he wants dust. Oh, he is lit up, too. Look at that. Boom, there he goes. Light leaves. Nice. Congrats. My first one for first Pacific. God, Pacific sailfish are a different creature. I've heard about them. I've, I've, I've seen footage of them, but they're just a bigger, bigger fish, a lot bigger fish. I mean, we're talking about fish that get into the you know, high 100, 100 pound range, and Atlantic sailfish aren't like that. And these fish are aggressive. Um, to get them to come in on a teaser and, and stay with the teaser for a while, it can happen, you know, on Atlantic sailfish, but these things are monsters, man, and they're mean. There you go, baby. There you go. 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 Nice. God, those Pacific sails are different animals than the Atlantic ones, Ozzy. Yep. Much bigger, huh? Much bigger. Woo! Gotta love this. Nice, man. Nice, huh? Came up on that teaser, that yeah. short teaser? No, the long teaser. Oh, the long one? I didn't see yeah. it. I had to drop it back a little bit. Down and dirty. What's the average size of these? Well, about 80 pounds. Coming up. There you go, baby. Come there on. Yeah, yeah. nice. It never gets old, man. Oh. It never gets old. I love seeing these. Look at that. Look at that. Woo! Look at the sail, the color of it. God, pretty, pretty. Look at that, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> little by little, grab the leader. Careful. 
Look at the colors on that one. God, how pretty is that? Yeah. Gotta get the hook out? Yep. Watch out with the hook. Let's build it. Hooks out. Beautiful. Good job, guys. One thing I heard about in this area is these giant schools of spinner dolphin. And there can be acres of these things. And, and to see them you know, jumping out of the water, corkscrewing, it, it, not only is that a, a neat sight to see, but a lot of times that means there's tuna nearby, which is always a good sign. So I just made a little jog offshore. You got yeah. the word that the yellowfin were here. Correct. Yeah, Soon those are full in. <laughs> so all these uh, spinner dolphins are here. Correct. The yeah, so the yellowfin, and then what happens with that is you have all the yellowfin tuna around it. So that's where we're trying to go in a circular pattern to see if we catch any of the yellowfin tuna right now. And obviously with this tuna, it's going to be blue armor. Absolutely. We figured that out real quick. Oh, yeah. there he is, there he is, there he is. Go, lock it up. He's, he's not there. He's on, he's, he's on. He's on. <laughs> yellowfin, I think. Yellowfin tuna, look. You got a nail too. A little tuna action. Just when we were talking about it. Saw him just pile on this bait. Missed it, came back, hit it again, and then came up and ate one of the teasers. Another one. I think we got a little lunch right here, Oz. Could be. <laughs> you took some line off, I'll tell you that. <laughs> back at Pacific Fins, man, they have fresh yellowfin every night, and now I know why. Pretty abundant out here. Color. God, Ozzy, that's a nice fish. Yep. There you go. Nice fish! Nice fish! Oh my God! Solid yellowfin, bro. That's gonna be some good dinner right there. That's right. Look at that. We just got the call that they were out here. We nice. had another six mile jog Correct. on shore yes. as soon as we got here. Hooked this, had another one come up and eat that teaser. Correct. They're yeah, they're here. here. I mean, it's Yeah, we gotta get a couple awesome. more of these. That's right. Woo! The first thing Ozzy said when we got to Pacific Fins was prepared to gain 10 pounds. And he's not lying. You come here, you need to bring your appetite because the food is phenomenal. It's as fresh as it possibly comes. You're eating dolphin that was just caught that day. Oh, That's how we do it here in Guatemala. My God. Nice. <laughs> wow. You catch a Dorado or a tuna, and that's what you're going to have for lunch. Where the bits. Dorado sandwich. Sashimi, sushi, that's all gonna be on the boat. That's your fish. Hooked up! That's a big God, this is a big one. This is the biggest sail I've ever hooked. This is my second Pacific sail. This is a doozy here. Came up on the left teaser and faded off that one and went over to the right long. It's crazy bite. God, there's a beast, man. These Pacific sails are different monsters. Coming up, there's the leader. That's a big, dude, that's a hundred and, that's a hundred pounder for sure. Jesus, bro, it looks like a marlin instead of a sail. Wow. It does, dude. I think it looks like a marlin. Yeah, that's 120. Sorry, this is 120, easy. Easy 120. Easy 120. Here we go. <laughs> Got him. 
That's my biggest one, bro. Okay, 120, baby. Easy. Nice. When people think of fishing tools, typically they think of rods, reels, pliers, and tackle. Probably one of the most overlooked products that you have on your boat is your sunglasses. Having the correct polarized lenses out on the water is extremely important, not only for the health of your eyes, but also for the ability to see into the water and to see the fish. Maui Gym offers polarized plus two technology, and what that means is colors are more vivid and contrast crisper. When choosing a pair of sunglasses, there's a couple things to consider. The right fit. It's extremely important to get a pair of glasses that cut out all the visible light. The tighter that that lens can fit to your face, the more eye protection you'll have. Remember, when you're out on the water, those UV rays actually bounce off the water and can come up underneath your lens. So you want a nice full frame lens when you're out on the water to protect you from those rays. Check out your local retailer for a pair of Maui gyms. I promise you, you won't be sorry. Fishing's insane, and that's what brought us here, I, and I keep thinking this to myself, we came here for the fishing, and I'm truly excited by it, but that's just one aspect of it. There's so much more that Guatemala has to offer. Incredible history to this country, incredible topography, there's so much to see and do that if you were just to stay on the coast, I think you'd be missing out on a big part of this whole country. Coffee beans are a major export item for Guatemala. I, I have a passion for coffee, I love coffee, and it's one of those things that you always just see a finished product. To have the opportunity to go to the countryside and see where these things are grown, to take it all in, that, that intrigued me and that's something that I wanted to do. And just bend the whole tree down to pick. Yeah. Wow. One by one, one at a time. Like that, yeah. Ah, okay. One one. Oh, so they got to do everything one by one. Really? Why couldn't yeah, you grab? Yeah, because they, they'll mess it up. They'll mess them up if you do all together. Yank them on. Oh, really? It messes yep. up the tree. Correct. So we go from picking these things that look like fresh berries on a tree to you know, popping a bean, bean out and then fermenting this bean. Once they're dried out, then they go on the stone and they're ready to be roasted. It's a slow roasting process on a wood-burning stove that they have out here out in the open. I mean, this is the roasting process. The longer you cook them, the, the deeper, richer the flavor. She says, she, I even asked her, how do you know when these things are done? And she said, just by the color of the bean. She could tell by the color of the bean when they were ready to be done. To see her grind these beans to a finished product, I think is a process that we all take for granted. There's so much to it. There's another country involved. There's another culture. There's people. There's, there's a whole backstory to this finished product that I'm used to having in my hands every day of the week. I say to every new guest or potential guest, come visit Guatemala. I mean, it has so much to offer. The fishing is out of this world. The culture, you'll be surprised by the history. The people, the warmest, give it a shot and you'll be disappointed. Ozzy had a, he was like a tour guide. The guy had it all, all planned out. He kept saying, listen, just, just wait. You're going to see. I got it all taken care of. You know, the fishing is always exceptional down here. I, I knew that we were going to be in store for some wonderful fishing because it's always wonderful down here. Um, but also the other, the other things that he had, the other adventures he had in line for us, I was, that's what I was really looking forward to as well.
On the ride offshore, I've been staring up the ceiling of this rod rack with this fly rod in it. I want to try this thing out. He's there, he's there, he's hot, he's hot. Stay there, one more to your left now. All the way to the left. Stay there, he's coming. He's there, he got him. Yes! Yeah! Yes! Bucket list. Check that one off. What a trip. How far? We're almost there, man. Now you know why you pay so much for coffee. It came out of my nose. <laughs> Viva Fabulosa. That's the hot station? That's the yes. number one radio station, Fabulosa. <laughs> I'm struggling. Hey, Red. Hola. <laughs> You're not leaving tomorrow morning anywhere. Am I saying something wrong? I'm not saying hello. No, <laughs> you guys are laughing at me like I'm. I got the wrong word. I'm not getting fresher out of that right there. That's so good. Real juicy.